from the KGW HD Studios. Where the news comes first. News Channel 8 at 5 starts now. It's a snow emergency. One Oregon town battles to dig itself out, but the snow just keeps piling up. Tonight, people are trapped inside homes without power, and the water supply is in danger, and crews just can't keep up. Good evening, I'm Joe Donlan. And I'm Tracy Berry. We have News Channel 8 team coverage of the January storm. We begin in Detroit, Oregon. We travel more than 100 miles to the town in crisis. That's where News Channel 8's Dave Northfield spent today with some of the town leaders. Dave, they've got a big problem there. They sure do, and there are walls of snow all over this town. I want to show you they are 10 feet high in some spots. So Detroit's leaders have declared a state of emergency here. Since December 1st, 150 inches of snow has fallen in this little town. Locals have said they haven't ever seen anything like it, and so they are struggling to dig out and keep basic services running. There were pickup trucks completely covered with snow. There were travel trailers that were totally buried. There were roofs on houses with six and seven feet of snow stacked up on it. Um, snow in every roadway, every driveway. You, you literally could not get down the streets and into the, into the uh, driveways of people in their homes without an incredible amount of work shoveling it out. And the hard part was, if you tried to clean a street off, you had to have a place to put the snow, so you had to go move the snow out of parking lots and open spaces and make big piles out of the snow that was in the parking lots in order to move the snow off the streets and into the parking lots. And as soon as they'd get it cleared, it'd get another 18 inches of snow on the ground. So it just it's like chasing your tail for about a week and a half or so up there. The, the, the striking thing to me was waking up every morning and there was another foot or a foot and a half. And people would call me the night before, well, what's going to happen? Well, you know, I'm not a weatherman, but I kept in very good touch with the National Weather Service. And they were great on the, giving me the predictions, but they were always the same, more snow. It's just overwhelming. The city of Detroit has one road grader and two plows, and I saw that there was just no way that we were going to be able to handle this. And it was really obvious when the snow got so deep that uh, you just basically couldn't even move. I saw that things were just getting out of hand. In fact, we had a form that had already been made up uh, in, in uh, the procedure on how, how to declare an emergency. And of course, contacting uh, John in his office was just the best thing that ever happened for us because uh, they knew the proper steps and, and uh, who to get a hold of and they constantly asking me what we needed. And I gotta tell you, um, every time we'd send a new resource up there, they'd have to figure out how to task that resource and get them on, on task and get them missioned into a place someplace in the city or the cities and that's where Ed came in. Uh, is they came to him first and he'd put them on mission and get them started and where they needed to be among all the other things that he was doing. And I thought we really need to find out uh, who the elderly are in town and uh, what their needs might be. And so we tried to go to them right away and let them know that uh, we were there to help them in any way we could. We, we had people getting medicine for them uh, driving uh, into town uh, 20, 30, 50 miles, wherever they could get a prescription. And then, uh, of course, when we went to them at their homes, they were elated. Uh, so when you plowed out a little path to their driveway or shoveled out the doorways, they, you know, they, they felt better about it. They knew that they had a way out now. A phenomenal amount of help from, from just so many agencies. Uh, from uh, Marion County on down, I could go on and on, and private help. We had private contractors that came and said, we aren't asking for one thing, just tell us what you want us to do. They brought equipment, uh, heavy equipment, they brought themselves, families came and helped. They said they'd do anything. They shoveled, uh, and then we had team leaders to take them around to the needed places. Uh, so it was uh, it was a real team, team effort, and. I just think that was, uh, it worked out awfully well. And that's really important is that sense of volunteerism uh, to help each other out when the time comes and, and it becomes critical to the survival of a community. Um, if, if they don't help each other out, if it's just all for them, all for yourself, uh, 
we'll never get through a situation like that. So individuals and families and communities need to be prepared to take care of themselves for a while and, and be prepared to work together in order to respond to situations like this. That's why in the whole emergency management arena, we, we talk 72 hours, be prepared to take care of yourselves and each other for at least 72 hours uh, and, and do the planning necessary to do that. So that's really important for people to remember. Well, of course, I feel uh, quite overwhelmed when uh, the Red Cross first contacted me. Uh, I didn't feel uh, I deserved a hero award. I, I just felt it was my job. I feel a lot of pride, though, from what was done. I do. I feel real good about helping people, and to me, that's enough pay. Just the feeling that you actually help people. I can reflect back on that forever. Mm -hmm.